I wish I had two machines, one that did zigzag stitch and one that did straight stitch. Otherwise known as having a sewing machine and a serger. Brilliant. <laughs> morning. Guess what's finally gonna happen today, or over the next several days? Second capsule wardrobe! It has been so long since the original idea for those capsule wardrobes. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was before we even moved to this house, so like over six months ago, and I'm just now finally finishing it. So if there's a sense in this whole video of like, I'm just gonna get it done. That's why. I'm still excited about it in general, but my interest levels have technically dropped significantly, which is why you'll notice there are several patterns on this table. This pattern has the same girl. I always thought this girl got hired to model because she looks like Lucy Hale. Is that who it is? I think that's who I mean. I find the models on patterns really interesting because I feel like they're often hired based on if they look like someone more famous, especially in like the costuming patterns. The patterns are often supposed to be reminiscent of some big costuming craze that's out at the time, Lord of the Rings or Bridgerton, whatever it is. And I feel like they'll try to hire models who somewhat resemble the actors in those movies or TV shows to be like, we're not allowed to put that name on it, but we all understand what we're trying to show you, right? Good job, pattern people. Also, after completing my whole Grammys dress thing, I am feeling a little, I wouldn't call it burnt out on sewing, definitely not burnt out, but like a little depleted. That dress took a lot of effort and like I still wanna sew things right now, but I kind of don't wanna have to give as much effort at this exact moment. Give me a week or so, and I'm sure I'll be back to normal. I mean, I'm hoping that just diving in and sewing something else will put me back to normal. <laughs> so we're doing it. Quick recap, if you have no idea what I'm talking about here. Many, many months ago, I got a whole buttload of fabric remnants from my favorite crafting thrift store, Remainders. They let you stuff bags full of smaller pieces of fabric and then give it to you for 15 bucks. I stuffed a lot of bags. I got a lot of fabric with the goal being to create a capsule wardrobe, six articles of clothing that could all be mixed and matched together solely using these fabric remnants, which I basically got for anywhere from like 40 to 60 cents per yard. As usual, I got way too excited by way too many cute pieces of fabric. I mean, look at this, it's adorable. And I ended up with two different capsule wardrobe ideas. I've already made one, this is the second one, and I've already made the first piece of this second one in my learning to make pants video, which is this pair of very, very pink. They look red in the video probably, but they're pink palazzo pants. So I just have five more articles of clothing to go in order to complete this capsule wardrobe and finally be done with this project that for some reason I can't let go of. Let's take a look at what I intend to make from these five remaining fabrics. First up, we have this incredible polka dot fabric. I absolutely love it, it's so pretty. It's a little bit sheer, so I do think I'm gonna have to line it, but the goal here is to make a skirt. And since I made a big ol' circle skirt on my previous capsule wardrobe, I wanted to try a pleated skirt this time, which is why I did that whole exploration of pleats. Yep, it was just for this. I'm still not really sure what type of pleats I'm going to use, but I know the whole three, five, seven, ten rule now, so it will depend on how much fabric there is here. Next up, there's this lovely like turquoisey teal fabric. It is also very thin and sheer, so it will also need a lining. But I thought with this one, I would make sort of like a camisole dress or a slip dress, something very light and comfy and small that can easily be worn as a layer underneath things, I'm assuming, we'll see. Then I have this orange fabric that seems like a linen to me. It's probably not, let's be real, but it is linen ish in style. Now I am absolutely terrible at making shirts. I'm also terrible at buying shirts. I don't know what it is, but they just don't interest me. However, I've made so many skirts lately that I really need to start making shirts. So despite the fact that part of me really wants to make a pair of shorts out of this fabric, we're gonna make 
a shirt. Probably just like a v-neck simple thing. I don't know, I might put some like ruffle sleeves on it. We're winging it, man. We're winging it hardcore on that one. Then of course there was this hot pink fabric that I made some palazzo pants out of and those are done. Thank God, one thing out of the way. Moving on to this absolutely fabulous floral fabric with like a honeycomb texture almost. I love this stuff. It's crazy. There's not that much of it though. I'm thinking like a cropped sweatshirt almost sort of thing. It would be similar in style to one of the dolman sleeve shirts that I made, maybe. I might also try to make this with like normal sleeves, so we'll see. And finally, I have this silkyish soft pink and brown cream sort of print. It would look super cute with the hot pink pants. So I'm gonna try to make, yet again, a top because y'all, I really need to learn to make more tops. I'm gonna use a pattern here and make like a long sleeved, basically just a blouse sort of style. <laughs> Something I have very, very few of. So again, because I'm feeling a little depleted. I'm going to try to use patterns for a lot of these instead of trying to draft my own patterns as I usually do. The pleated skirt, of course, I can do on my own. I've done it before. I will do it again. But for the four other items, I dug through my small pattern stash and found patterns that are at least similar in style to what I'm going for. So I have at least a starting place and I can alter the patterns from there. I think I'm actually going to start with the blouse because this is the only one that I think I'm just gonna make the pattern as it is. And I think that's what I need right now. One thing I have learned when it comes to creativity and making things is that sometimes you just gotta accommodate yourself in order to keep yourself from fully burning out. Most of the time I wanna dive in and create my own patterns and do crazy explorations. And right now I'm not feeling that. So I think just following a pattern might be the thing that helps me carry on instead of stepping away and not coming back for months. Let's give it a go. Of course, before I could begin, I had to show some love to my newest child, Chester, which instantly made Link jealous. And yes, I do water my plants with a wine decanter. Fancy is as fancy does. Some quick measurements and a pattern exploration left me with a very simple realization. I do not have enough fabric for this. I do not have enough fabric for this. I kind of forgot how much material sleeves take. That is so much wasted fabric. Why do so many things have to be on a diagonal green line? Is that what bias cutting means? <laughs> I don't know. But what if I don't do that? <laughs> what you gonna do about it? Eventually, I decided to do what I do best, throw all the rules out the window and do whatever I want. Don't stop me now, I'm having such a good time. This is a method that has turned out well for me when baking, but I must admit the results when sewing are not always as delicious. Turns out that things are often done a certain way because that's the best way to do them. Who would have thunk it? But my way involved shortening the sleeves and cutting both them and the neck sash thing totally not on the grain line recommended. Let's see how that turns out for me after I go eat something. But then in the process of making lunch, I remembered that I have egg whites and Meyer lemons in the fridge that need to be used. So it turned into a baking day. I present Portuguese Molotov pudding, minus the caramel sauce that's supposed to pour out over the top when you flip it upside down and instead decided to stay stuck in the pan in a chunk. Several hours and unbelievable amounts of sugar later, I returned to stitch this blouse together. I struggled a bit with the slit in the front and the facing. It just doesn't make sense to me that you can stitch a triangle slash the middle and then turn it inside out. Or rather my brain sort of gets it and my hands have yet to achieve it. I don't understand. In what world is that supposed to work? What am I doing wrong? My solve in the moment was just making the slit a little wider at the bottom. That's the best I got right now. Works for me. Everything else came together pretty simply, although this did remind me how much I could use a serger. Finishing edges without one is just such a pain in the butt. Yo, this is not bad. I am uh, not much of a blouse person, but I can work with this. And you know what? The sleeves being 
cut in the opposite direction. I think because the pattern is so busy, you don't even really notice. I don't think it made much of a difference at all. And I prefer them three quarter length because I hate long sleeves. I'm just not good at wearing them. I don't like things touching my wrists. One down. So I've had a slight change of plans for the orange material shirt, namely because I was thinking last night, how am I going to do the closure on this thing? Apparently, pretty much every top I own is made out of a stretchy fabric, so I don't really get the concept of how you're supposed to get a non-stretchy fabric shirt on and off. And I didn't like any of the ideas I was coming up with, so I thought instead I'll use one of these wrap dress patterns that I have and just make it a wrap shirt so I can just tie it on. I don't have a lot of material though, so which one of these I can make is solely dependent on how much of this fabric there is. Let's see. Can I make anything out of this? Thus commenced my favorite game of unfolding and refolding a massive pattern just to find the four small pieces that I need. The delicacy of the paper really lends itself to my struggle. Then I realized this fabric is way too wrinkled, even for my low standards, so it was off to the ironing board. Y'all, I cannot express to you how many times I arranged and rearranged these pattern pieces on this tiny piece of fabric. It was clear early on that they would all fit on the proper grain line to boot, but I am just so desperate to waste as little fabric as possible that there always seems to be a better way. But there was not. Some fabric had to be left behind. I think these pattern instructions are the most confusing ones I've read yet, although I doubt I'm helping myself by altering a dress into a shirt. I did finally take note of the proper seam allowances though. 1.5 centimeters. On the Spanish side of the instructions, cause I couldn't be bothered to find the English. Is that five eighths of an inch? And yeah, I've definitely been using way too small of a seam allowance every time I've used a pattern so far. Yeah, okay. I guess that's the norm. Fun discovery. Of course, then I managed to sew the two front pieces on upside down. Such good times. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a lot better. Helps to sew on your pieces in the right direction. The question now is, do I want to line this? <sighs> yep, I went with a lining. I'ma line it. As much as I was gunning to be done with this one, it seemed like the better choice. Uh, so I'm not sure how successful this one was. It kind of turned into like a little tie front thing once I finish whip stitching up the hem. These are the times that I'm like, did I do something wrong or is the pattern just weird? Who's to say? Please excuse the lawn care noises in the background. So for this blue dress, I was going to use the top of this pattern as like a guideline for the top. I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore. Instead, I think I'm gonna make sort of just a loose, gapey dress and then put a band of elastic on the underbust to cinch it all in. That makes the most sense to me for a dress that is comfortable and easy to get on made from a not stretchy material. I think I should be able to just wing it on this one. Let's try. This dress was super simple to cut out, but that could be, you know, meaningless if it turns out to not come together properly. I cut the lining out of this simple muslin, I think, material. So it'll be similarly light and breezy. And of course this fabric was only 45 inches wide. So I had to do some manipulation to fit the wider hem. Also y'all quick shout out to this dress. I'm pretty sure I got it in high school and 12 plus years later, not only does it still fit, but I still love it. Those are the garments we want in our wardrobes.
I started with the straps, classic procrastination tactic. Then after removing 5 billion pins, I'm an excessive pin user, I stitched the lining segments together down the center basted those onto the outer layers, and added the pockets while stitching up the sides. Which meant digging out that video I always have to watch before putting in French seam pockets, because apparently I have the memory of a goldfish. So it was at this point that I finally tried the dress on, and realized it's super tight around the bust. Oh. Like, good thing boobs are squishy okay. kind of tight. <sighs> I guess this is why it's recommended to try things on as you go, instead of winging it and waiting till the end. Y'all, I miss knit. Can my next project please involve nothing? But stretchy fabric, please. So I'm dumping the whole elastic under the bust idea and leaving it as is. Just have to whip stitch the bust lining down and hem it. So the last piece was rather frustrating to me in the end there. Um, for some reason, hemming it turned into a whole thing. <laughs> It doesn't help that that fabric is very reminiscent of what a lot of bridesmaids dresses are made out of, so it just took me straight back to my days of hemming bridesmaids dresses and being frustrated. <laughs> but yes, let's blame the dress and not at all my terrible construction methods. Anyway, all that to say, I need this next one to be easy peasy lemon squeezy. So I'm going to revisit my good old dolman sleeve style, basically make like the same thing I've made before. Enough chit chat, let's do it. Ah. Ah. It was very nice to return to familiar territory, both in terms of the design and the stretchy fabric. I got this thing cut out in less than 20 minutes, which just absolutely rocks my socks off. Sewing it together was just a breezy little walk in the park, but here's how we know I'm learning and growing with every piece. How about I try this on now, instead of at the very end? It fits! I mean, of course it fits, but you know what? Good on me for checking. Sewing on the cuffs, collar, and hem binding was as easy as one, two, three, if you say one, two, three really slowly. <laughs> I sewed the back of the collar to the front. So we're gonna try it on this way, and I guess I am undoing this regardless of how it fits. Whoops! Yeah, we're in like full-on turtleneck territory here. But basically, we're done! This is just, I think, coming off and being cut in half. I then proceeded to very carefully remove not the neck binding, but the hem binding. Why, oh, why, oh, why, oh. Yep, cut it in half and everything before I realized my mistake. Honestly, this is the best reason I've ever given myself to not be distracted by TV while working. Okay. But you know, what's a project without some sort of mistake along the way? Let's see if I can unpick the proper side now. Still managed to finish this piece before lunch, so ultimately, it was quite a win. Alrighty, same day, second garment. Woot! I normally start with the easiest thing when I'm making multiple garments for one project, which would be the skirt, because I've made so many skirts now. But yeah, this time I thought I would leave it till last, almost like a reward for getting through the other four. Twas a good plan. Do I want to line this? I mean, no. No, I don't. Should I line it? That's a different answer. You know, back in the day, if your skirt was a little see-through, you just put a slip under it. And by back in the day, I mean when I was a child, even though no other child my age was doing that, I was required to wear hose too, as like a 10-year-old. All that to say, I don't think I'm gonna line it. I'm just gonna let it be a little bit see-through and um, figure it out in the moment. Of course, we all know, because I did a whole pleats project, that a pleated skirt can just start with a rectangle of fabric. So the first thing I did was cut off a strip to be the waistband. Well, after finding a pin that works, because I keep having this issue with my pins not working. As usual, I am partially, if not mostly, to blame here, since I also keep throwing my pins that don't work back in the container with the rest of them. 
Anyway, then I managed to cobble a waistband lining and some pockets out of the shredded remains of my favorite lining fabric. R.I.P. You went to good use. And from there it was just a matter of figuring out which pleats I wanted to do, how big, how far apart, all that good stuff. I ended up going with knife pleats that overlap each other a little so that I could manipulate exactly how wide the waistband would end up being and not waste any of the fabric. Breezy. There's not a ton to say about this construction, really. It all went fairly smoothly, although I did sew the waistband together completely wrong. I was watching TV again. Y'all, I do not learn my lesson. Round two of French seam pockets went great, and I didn't even have to consult the video. So I just need to put in pockets at least every other day, and then I'll remember how. Hemming the straight edge of the skirt was delightfully quick. Another point to pleated skirts in the battle against circle skirts. And after months of sitting untouched on my scraps chest and only a few days of actual sewing, the second capsule wardrobe was at long last complete. Tis done at last! Yay. Oh, y'all, let's just get right to the part where I review and rate my own creations. Uh, starting with a grade for my general capsule wardrobe-ness, because on my first capsule wardrobe, I gave myself a big old F. It really did not work out in a very capsule-y way. There were not a lot of combos that I could make with the six garments that I had made. This time though, I am giving myself a lovely A minus. I'm gonna be generous. I would say B plus, but I'm being generous because there are some beautiful patterns and colors here and it's quite bright and yet it all really does kind of work together. So I get bonus points for that. But on to the individual pieces. Let's just start with the pieces I'm wearing. The floral dolman sleeve crop sweater. Um, I'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10. Love the fabric, it's pretty comfy. I keep making myself cropped things even though I never wear cropped things, so like, why? But I actually love the combo of the cropped sweater with these pants. I think now that I'm making more skirts and pants and whatever that sit actually on my high waist, I'm then more comfortable wearing cropped shirts and doing sort of, you know, if you see some midriff, it's like the ribcage midriff, Taylor Swift way. So, eight out of 10. The pants. I don't remember what I rated these pants in the pants video where I made them, but I'm pretty sure it was a fairly low number. I haven't worn them since then because I was not pleased with them, but I put them on today and was like, these are so comfortable and breezy and fun. What was my issue with them? Obviously, there are some construction things that could be better. I drafted these myself in my first ever attempt at making pants, so like, that's not surprising. But I'm not unhappy with them like I was last time. So regardless of what they got last time, this time they're getting a solid 7.5 out of 10. I think I'm gonna wear them. Let's jump over to Les Blue Dress. Three out of 10. This is definitely the worst piece out of the six. It just doesn't fit right. There were some serious errors in bust consideration, we shall say. Yeah. Three out of 10. The orange top, five out of 10. It's the second worst piece. It's a little odd. It's a little weird. However, once I tried it on 
with other items, I liked it a lot more. I first put it on without anything underneath, going like, oh ho ho, this is a goof, it's gonna be so risque. But it's not actually that risque, it covers everything, and I never felt like I was about to fall out of it. And again, with these pants, super cute! You just get that little peek of the rib cage area, it had very, like, 70s vibes. I'm kind of cool with it. That being said, it still doesn't fit very well. Like, I'm tying it in the front because that's the only way I ended up being able to put it on. It didn't turn out like it was supposed to, so 5 out of 10. But I am actually somewhat happy with how it turned out, so 5 out of 10. What's left? Oh yeah, the blouse. 9 out of 10. I think I'm gonna use this pattern again. I think I'm gonna start wearing stuff like this, maybe. This isn't really something I would wear around the house. If I still had a job where I, like, was around other people and had to dress nicely, I might might wear something like this, but I don't. And finally, the polka dot skirt. 8 out of 10. I did that thin waistband, which I haven't done, I think, since one of my very first skirts. For some reason, I've gotten very stuck in this concept of making wide waistbands, and they just keep getting bigger and bigger, and this time I didn't want to waste any fabric. I wanted all of it to go into the pleating, so I made this thin waistband, and I'm like, I really... I need to do that more often. 8 out of 10. Maybe even 9 out of 10. I'm not really giving myself any 10 out of 10s on this one. Ultimately, that's because on the construction side, I feel like all six of these pieces could have been a little better. Maybe I'm getting even more picky about my actual construction of things. But at last, I have finished my second capsule wardrobe. I've only been meaning to do this for so freaking long. I'm very pleased. Because you know what the best part of finishing this project is? There's finally no fabric on my chest of scraps. 